All right, this is the 2022 AP Macro FRQ set one, question two. Let's look at this question. So commercial banks must hold 20% of their deposit. Their reserve requirement ratio is 20%. All right, now suppose that the consumer sells 100 in government bonds to commercial banks. So selling bonds, is a decrease of one hundred thousand dollars. Buying bonds, if the Fed buys bonds, then you increase the money supply. If they sell bond bonds, they decrease the money supply. And if you need, you can draw the little the little picture. You have the bank and you have the Fed. And so if the Fed sells bonds here, right, they're going to give the bank bonds. So the bank, they were going to, they're selling the bonds back to the bank and getting the bank's money. So this is going to be the money. So there's a decrease in the money supply because if the Fed has money, then it's not in circulation. So that's not part of the answer. That's just kind of me showing if this, the Fed sells bonds, then that means there's a decrease in the money supply. So we want to find the maximum change, maximum change in the bond sales. Okay. So the change in money supply and money supply is going to be equal to the change in money, so change in money times, or change in, like, I guess the bonds, bond sales times the multiplier. So that means the we're going to say the change in bonds is $100,000. And it's negative because this is a taking out of $100,000 into the economy. And then you multiply by the multiplier, which is going to be 1 over 0.2. If you do one over the reserve requirement, so there's going to be equal negative five hundred thousand dollars. That is not a money sign. So this is part A. Part B says draw the correctly labeled graph of the money market. So that is a B. So the money market says it tells you what to plot. So you're gonna look at the nominal interest rates. So we're gonna the key thing is the change in the nominal interest rate. So we're going to plot the nominal interest rate. I'm just gonna type it. Nominal interest rate and over here is the quantity of money. I'm going to say 85% of the time, if you don't know what to put on the x-axis, it's quantity of something. That's obviously not a guarantee, because there's a couple of things. But there's a high chance. And this only works, this will only, this graph basically only changes the interest rate in a market with limited reserves. So if this question was in the 2023, then 
they would have to say limited reserves here. So this is the first money supply, this is the quantity. So the money supply is constant, and thus changed by the Fed, so let's call this R1. And so the money supply has decreased by $500,000, so this will be MS2. Two. And so the money supply has decreased, and so this is now R2, and the interest rate has gone up. All right, what does part C say? Given the change in the money supply, is the, velo is the velocity of money it's constant? Okay, so it is asking about the money, the velocity of money equation. So the money times the velocity of money times is equal to the price times the GDP. What will happen to gross domestic product? So a decrease in the money supply will decrease real GDP. So the explanation would be something along the lines of according to the quantity money that's what this is um the uh money supply is we have to rate related to the exactly what it says nominal uh gdp a decrease in the money supply I'll write it by decrease so they know exactly exactly what I am arguing. So decrease and then with my explanation, a decrease in the money supply de uh, decreases the uh, nominal. Just according to that quantity theory of money right there. All right, then part D is based on this change in nominal GDP. What happens to the price level if real GDP is constant? All right. So this is basically trying to assess your understanding of uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply in relation to this. And so it doesn't ask us to draw the model, but it never hurts. So this is the price level. I'm just going to abbreviate it PL. You can kind of just sketch this in your margins. If you need to try and work this out. And so this is going to be the real GDP. But we know that the money supply has decreased. Since this is our aggregate demand, we know that there's just going to be a decrease in aggregate demand. This is this short run aggregate supply. We know this is a decrease in aggregate demand. Just less money, less consumer spending, less investment, uh, all of the above. This decrease in aggregate demand, here's our price level one and price level two. There's a decrease. So this, there's a decrease in price level. We don't have to explain that. But that is why. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, good luck.